Welcome back. You're now watching the political segment on the weekend show. For the past couple of weeks, Nigerians have been complaining about the Naira having the free fall. A lot of this is saying on the foreign exchange and Nigeria's reliance and dependence on the dollar. It went as high as 900 Naira to as low as 700 Naira. However, who should manage these fluctuations? Should the CBN declare parallel rates daily and ensure that it's enforced? Or should this be left for the BDC guys on the streets? This is conversations we will be having in the political segment. And why do we have to depend so much on the dollar when for some people, they don't need that reliance? We'll be having that conversation with... What Calvin Emanuels, good morning. Good morning. And a welcome to the show. Welcome again to the mm. show. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, so Kelvin, um, a couple of weeks ago, we heard that the Naira was going to be redesigned. Um, so 500, 1,000, a couple of the denominations. And as a result of that, the, do the price of the dollar in the parallel market went high. Um, a couple of days ago, we heard that the US may be redesigning some of their um, dollar notes, and then there was a fluctuation. Why do we have so much fluctuation um, that isn't driven by market forces at the moment? So th thank you very much for that question. First of all, the news about the redesign of the Naira notes is correct. Yeah. The news about the US government redesigning the $100 bill is not correct. We've come out with a statement to debunk that. Yeah. Uh, moreover, if um, the US government is going to de redesign the $100 bill, they will give sufficient notice. The U UK government, um, they were going to do the same redesign. They gave a six month notice and they also said that for the period of 12 months between March and September 2022, when that notice expires, the 20 and 50 pound bill amounting about 17.5 billion pounds will still be illegal tender in the UK. And the result was, the reason was because um, they had a calendar on the royal family. The new Queen Elizabeth was going out and Prince Charles was coming in. So that was why they gave the notice. Now on the issue of why the Naira dropped so much in value over a short period of time and how over the last 48 to 72 hours, the rates has pulled back down to about 680 hours at the close of trading yesterday, is because when you have a policy like this that is, in my opinion, a smokescreen, and you have only a 90-day window within which you have to mop up 2.7 trillion notes, not value, trillion notes, right? You're going to have a lot of people fly, do a capital flight into the USD. So you had a lot of people bidding for US dollar and pounds, which was the reason why you saw that sharp hike, because there was a lot of demand. Um, not a lot of people want to bring in cash into the banking system. And then they figured that, look, if we take it to the US dollar, when the new notes comes into force, we can always bring it back to the Naira and get the new Naira notes. So that's the reason why you have um, the sharp um, um, hike. Now, there are unconfirmed reports, unconfirmed, it's not been confirmed, that there was actually like CBN intervention in the last 48 hours. That was why we saw um, some people caught off guard yeah. and a lot of speculators are crying. And people are reeling from millions of Naira losses because some people yeah. got above 800 Naira to the dollar. But the, the implication of this, for example, is that, for example, the uh, Major Marketers Association of Nigeria, Moman, doesn't get from M from the central bank. So you're going to see that impact on diesel prices. You're also going, to, diesel prices already started going up, but not, it's not a sharp hike yet. You're also going to see it impact on food prices, especially for the ones that are exposed to imp um, um, importation into Nigeria. Then when, when traders cannot, they don't have a forward guidance, um, you go to bed today, your business is worth maybe $500,000, you go to bed today, every three months you have consignments coming into a papa. Uh, you, you go to bed and you don't know where the exchange rate is going to be. You're going to see wild fluctuations and you're going to see it affect prices which will affect inflation and affect the purchasing power of the people. Hmm. So uh, let's talk about the reliance of the Nigerian society on the dollar. How dangerous is it? You, you can't blame Nigerians. And the reason you can't blame Nigerians is because, you know, you have $28 billion in domiciliary accounts in Nigeria. Um, the, there's always been rumors for a long time that the CBM might want to expropriate um, your domiciliary accounts. There are rumors. Um, that if, if they try it, it's going to lead to the kind of capital flight we, we've never seen in the history of Nigeria before. It's going to damage investor confidence completely in Nigeria. And we're going to have people fly away from the economy. Now, 
um, you can't blame people because when they don't have like guidance on what it's going to happen tomorrow. For example, 10 years ago, you had the rates between 150, 153, 155, 158. CBN had like a fixed exchange rate mechanism that is plus or three, minus three naira. It says that on a daily basis, if the naira fluctuates plus or minus three naira above that band, central bank will intervene. Today, as we speak, the official market is trading between 437 and 441 and 680 to 900 naira. Why don't you change the exchange rate mechanism from fixed to float? How do you plan? You can't plan because you don't know what the exchange rate is going to be. Today is a 680. You might wake up tomorrow morning and it's 620. You may wake up the next day, it's gone up to 750. If people don't know what the exchange rate is going to be over the course of one week, two weeks, one month, three months, six months, they, they cannot plan. And it's going to, it, it ruins every other metric in the economy. If, if a company, for example, within the next six months is going to import $10 million of capital equipment yeah, for production, they will stop, they will cease, they won't bring it in. So for example, the fact that you have a wide gulf between the official and the parallel market is the reason why foreign direct investors are not bringing in um, uh, monies into Nigeria and registering it with no tap or certificate of capital imports. That affects your, uh, your currency. It's the reason why companies who export their proceeds are not bringing their NXP proceeds back into Nigeria. Yeah, and that affects your currency because you don't have enough disposable FX in, in, the, in the country. D and these are two major sources of FX that have always been a way for you to create like a shock for your exchange rate mechanism. And they are not coming. Investors are saying that Emirates cancelled um, Nigeria from its roots. And the reason is not because of the reason of um, Nigerians are going to Dubai and destroying Europe. It has nothing to do with that. Unconfirmed sources from the UAE, the media sources from the UAE said that the primary reason why the government in Abu Dhabi cancelled um, visas for Nigerians is actually because Emirates Airlines has trapped funds in Nigeria. The government is angry. So the airlines paid their sale of tickets at the official markets, and then the CBN is telling them you have to go to the um, parallel market to get the rates and you know w w the, 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 the effect of the external effect of devaluation of the currency is going to completely erode any profit margin they have on the sale of uh, um, airplane tickets in Nigeria. And then the same central bank is saying that, oh, you can't, um, you can't sell, sell your tickets in US dollar in contravention of sections 20 of the CBN Act of 2007. How, how do you want them to cope? So this is what troubles me. And explain to me like I'm five. Um, and the president had said before that if you want to transact in dollars, go source for your dollars on your own. We now have students in the UK whose admissions are being re um, revoked, whose visas are being um, denied because they've tried to process funds to the banks to pay their fees and the banks are not remitting the money. The CBN tells business owners to go to the parallel market to source for funds, which gives the power of demand and supply to the parallel market. The, those guys, the BDC guys, who have collected money, who the, the, um, the CBN have collected money to register them as BDCs. And so you've given them that power. And so you can't shut them out because you've registered and licensed them. However, the same CBN blames the parallel market for the currency fluctuation. So who's taking responsibility here? Where does the box stop? Whose um, role is it to fix this problem? Look, Andy, there's only one exchange rate in Nigeria, the parallel market. Any exchange rate that you cannot back by liquidity is called a government subsidy. That's what it is. The, the shenanigan of 437 to 441 is a shenanigan. It's, it's, it's a government subsidy for the rich, people connected to the central bank, people connected to the villa, people who can place a call to the vice president or the governor of the CBN or somebody who is there. The real rate is on the streets. And this is the reason why we're saying, like, look, for you, f why, why don't you, why, why are you creating problems for yourself? There's a $10 billion backlog of all kinds of demand. Um, currency, um, profit repatriation, um, from A, from Q, from M. All kinds of demands that the CBN cannot fill. Because the rate at which the, the, those demands are, 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 are registering, about um, um, 4.3 trillion naira, is at the official market. They, they don't have a dollar to fix it. Um, the crude oil production is just beginning to go up. Oil receipts are just beginning to come back on straight. How much is diaspora remittances? Companies are not bringing in their NXP process into Nigeria. Foreign direct investors are not bringing dollars into Nigeria. How do you get $10 billion to fill the backlog? 
So the back and forth between the APCON Association of Bureau, the change owners of Nigeria, and um, the CBN is just a blame game. And it's unfortunate that the, uh, the government is using EFCC to chase BDC owners. It's, it's unfortunate because the real problem you have in Nigeria is the fact that we refuse to bite the bullets and allow the Naira to float. Let there be only one exchange rate. A few months ago, the Vice President went to, to, to Washington to visit Kamala Harris. And I remember that when he had a meeting with David Malpass, the President of the World Bank, he gave him only two recommendations. Mr. VP, remove the subsidy on petrol, which is a scam, because Nigeria uses twice the petrol that Pakistan uses, and Pakistan has 20 million more people than Nigeria has. Number two, converge the exchange rate. Vice President did nothing of such. How do you have a, an exchange rate system where people can, with their connections, get $10 million, for example, at the official markets and come to the parallel market and discharge it and make 100% profits within 24 hours? And you don't have production in the economy to match the supply of money as speculation? Mm -hmm. How do you have an economy run like that? The government has just refused to bite the, the bullet. And it's, it's solely on the shoulders of the president and the CBN governor. And it's, it's completely shameful. It's completely shameful that at the time when we have inflation, food inflation at 23.34%, MBS is going to come out with their new figures this week. Yeah? At the time when we have core inflation at 20.77%, Nigerians are struggling to feed. 700 plus people died from floods. Which, and you see, you're going to see the flood affect the price of food. At the time when we have all these major problems in the economy, the central bank governor decided that the most important thing on the table for his schedule and agenda is to redesign it in the, the, the Naira notes. It's unfortunate. So what will be the impact of this CBN redesign? Will it in any way help or um, destroy the economy so far? It, it's, um, it's going to cause a lot of shock because, like I said, mopping up 2.7 trillion Naira notes within a 90-day window is, is unrealistic, right? It's going to cost the printing and minting corporation in Abuja tens of billions of naira to print because printing is not free, right? I, I don't see any impact on the real economic indices. The real economic indices is that 119 for every 100 kobo in revenue Nigeria gets, the government spends 119 kobo servicing debt. The real issues here is that Nigerian government borrowed 22 trillion naira from the central bank in violation of section 38 of the CBN Act on Ways and Means Lending, and has refused to pay that money back. The real um, 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 limit and cap is actually $450 million. And it will interest you to note, Andy and Edith Young, that in September, the CBN governor still went ahead and gave the federal government another $749 billion from that same Ways and Means Lending window. And you know what they want to do? They want to convert 22.8 trillion naira CBM printed out of thin air through what is called quantitative easing into a 40-year government bond. Moody's downgraded Nigeria because of that. Fitch just yesterday came out and downgraded Nigeria also. Moody's downgraded Nigeria to B, B3, which is four steps above junk. Fitch came out yesterday downgraded Nigeria to B-, minus, which is six steps above junk. The implication of that is when these ratings agencies, which are the most notable ratings ag agencies in the world, downgrade you, your credit default swap goes up. It will cost more money for you to borrow on the international market, and your debt servicing will go up. That's the implication of what you have today in Nigeria. So most Nigerians still earn in Naira, the average civil servant, the av average business person. Um, is it true to say that not everyone should be affected by this forex rise and fall? The percentage of Nigerians leaving the country is still below 1%. But there's this, we are quite obsessed with the dollar to Naira. And so you have businesses that have zero influence of the dollar on them, inflating prices. We've not had, I've, I've not bought fuel from a fuel station in the last four weeks. I have to buy from black market or other streets. But why does this have to affect the woman selling her gary in the market. Why does this dollar rise and fall have to affect the person selling the Nigerian rice, which is grown in Nigeria and packaged in Nigeria and sold here? Why can't we separate them? Andy, you can't separate them because the s supply chain for food and for so many other things are so interconnected. And it's interesting to know that 
uh, at least 30 percent of the paddy used in Nigeria to process rice is actually not grown in Nigeria. It's smuggled into Nigeria. Th this is not the fact that custom service or presidency might, might like to hear, but let's face facts. The reality is the reality. Um, the, 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 the reality of the situation is that when the, as the Naira continues to drop and you continue to see that wide, wide gulf between the official and the parallel market and people begin to hold dollar to speculate because they don't know what direction is going, the reality is that the cost of importing food, especially for the food that comes out of Nigeria, becomes small. Yeah? If you go to a lot of supermarkets today, departmental stores, there are so many items that are off the shelf. You won't see them. I haven't heard that games is um, shutting down. I was there yesterday, yeah. and they are pretty much closing down. Right. And it's because of supply chain. So are you saying that the sardine that um, is imported, or the geisha that is imported, or just imagine the staples that, Nigeria, that Nigerians eat, that it, it, the critical mass of Nigerians are not consuming it. So when you see how complicated the supply chain is, for example, the price of diesel, yeah. uh, diesel is imported, diesel is not processed in Nigeria. Uh, by the way, Andy, by the way, Andy, four moribund dead refineries consume nearly 100 billion naira in pensions and staff salaries. You're not processing one liter of PMS, AG, or, or diesel. The diesel that is imported into Nigeria is affected by the dollar. The diesel is necessary to transport the gari from the farm to the city. That's how it affects the woman who, who produces gari and processes gari and the people who consume it. That's how it affects the common man. Because energy and food are the two primary indicators in the calcul calculation of cost and consumer price index that determines inflation and purchasing power. Mm. So what are the could be solutions, could be a quote to these problems? Number one, the central bank governor has needs to stop violating section 38 of the CBN Act and stop lending money to the federal government. Total outstanding to the federal government so far is $48 billion. That limit says you should not lend more than $450 million. That's number one because it contributes to the devaluation of the Naira. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it takes a shorter time for the inflation in Nigeria to double and for the currency to lose 100% of its value. Between 2015 and 2022, the Naira, the, the inflation has doubled three and a half times, yeah? And the Naira has lost 3.5 times of its value within the space of eight years. That's the first solution. That's on the monetary side. On the structural side, unfortunately, there isn't much the government can do since it's close to the end but for the next president, you need to focus on backward integration and um, demand pool factors that are necessary to ensure that you slow down the pace at which you import the um, commodities that goes into calculation of consumer and cost price index. And a very good place to start is in refining your own petroleum products. That's a very good place to start because that will automatically save you about $10 billion. So does the Dangote refinery help if it goes live? Absolutely, this? it will help. Yeah, absolutely, too. and it will also remove the um, the scam that Nigeria consumes 66 million liters of PMS on a daily basis. Nigeria doesn't consume 66 million liters of PMS. In 2016, Ibe Kachuku, the Minister of Petroleum, said Nigeria was consuming 29 million liters. Between 2016 and 2022, the government, the same government, says we are consuming 66 million liters. So the question I have for um, the government is: Has the population of Nigeria doubled within the last six years? that we're not aware of. As the number of cars on the streets, generators, tricycles, motorbikes doubled between 2016 and 2022, if you can't provide empirical data to support the decisions you make, mm. then there is a problem somewhere. I think that's a very good place to leave it. And we'll continue to monitor this situation and also ask your um, thoughts on it as this news evolved but thank you so much for always joining us thank you. on thank the you show so and that's the much we can take on today's episode of the weekend show um, you can watch our um, previous episode and this episode on youtube at weekend show ng on youtube you can also check us out on social media at on facebook instagram and twitter at weekend show i'm also on social media sometimes at andy <laughs> madike on facebook instagram and twitter and dd at dd underscore on instagram and twitter and signing us out for this week